Hello there and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel. Thanks for joining us as we continue to highlight different topics on clinical research. If there's a topic you feel is lacking from our channel, let us know by commenting below. Today's topic will be on legacy devices. So what are legacy devices anyway? Welcome to the GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. If you're probably wondering what legacy devices are, you're not alone. It's because legacy devices are not directly mentioned in the new EU medical device regulation, the MDR. For some, you might already be familiar with this term from the Medical Device Directive or MDD. So here it comes. Legacy devices are all devices that conform to the old device rules but have not undergone conformity assessment according to the new EU MDR. I'll clarify a bit more. These are devices that were previously approved under the MDD, which had different regulatory requirements. You can see them here. So collectively called directives. And these devices continue to market even though they may not comply with the new MDR. For those that don't know, the EU medical device regulation, the MDR and IVDR, came to force in 2017, replacing the existing directives. This regulation was made effective on May 26, 2021, meaning manufacturers who want to market medical devices in the EU must now comply with the EU MDR. From 2021, medical device manufacturers were given a transition period to shift to the new regulation before 2024. During this period, Devices covered by certificates that had been issued before under the directives would remain valid for a maximum of five years after their issue date up until 26th of May 2024. That means for all legacy devices, for them to continue being sold and used in the EU market, manufacturers have to now comply with the new medical device regulations before the deadline. This has left an immediate rush for manufacturers with legacy devices to recertify their devices under the new medical device regulation within the provider transition deadline, while in the meantime, new devices continue to be certified. The regulatory bodies issuing certificates are therefore swamped and manufacturers are also working against time. The process of recertifying requires manufacturers to update the technical documentation, conduct additional testing, if necessary, and align with more stringent MDR requirements. It's a huge challenge, therefore, for manufacturers transitioning from MDD to MDR, and for a lot of them, these are some of the challenges that they are faced with. Recertification process requires additional resources, testing, and audits. There's not enough know-how for all parties involved in terms of back and forth communication or practicality of the MDR requirements. Second, notified bodies capacity. It was estimated that by the end of 2024, around 22,000 certificates will expire, of which 4,000 are set to expire this year. Since the notified bodies are the ones issuing the certificates, they are also facing a huge backlog of applications. And third, enhanced post-market surveillance. There is now a greater emphasis on post-market surveillance requiring manufacturers to actively monitor their devices' performance and safety throughout their life cycle. This includes conducting post-market clinical follow-up studies and addressing any reported issues promptly. And fourth, stricter clinical evidence requirements. More requirement for clinical data and evidence to support the safety and performance claims of medical devices. Manufacturers may need to gather additional clinical data to demonstrate compliance. Fifth, UDI. Another requirement of the MDR is that medical devices should be labeled with a unique device identifier, or UDI, for traceability purposes. Manufacturers of legacy devices may need to update their labeling to include UDIs. Six, supply chain. Manufacturers may need to review and update their supply chain processes to comply with MDR requirements, which may affect their distribution and sales operations. The good news is for legacy device manufacturers, in January this year, the transition deadlines were extended, provided different conditions are met. And this means for legacy device manufacturers, you are the only ones that can benefit from this extension. You now have more time to comply to the requirements. If you're curious what deadline applies for your device, 
get in touch with our team and we will be happy to address your questions. As a full service CRO with a team of regulatory experts who continuously address these issues, we pay very close attention to the applicable transition provisions so you can make the best use of these periods and make any adjustments necessary. So whether you need a clinical evaluation report, update or a review of the technical documentation, conducting post-market surveillance, or even if you need a clinical investigation, we are here for you. Contact us today using one of the options below and we'll be happy to consult you. Our job is to ensure that your legacy devices meet the new requirements and maintain their market access in the EU. Until next time, goodbye.